I remember him as a leader who was committed to doing the best he could for Kenyans, a person who was professional in the way he conducted business and government, a great debater in parliament, a great contributor, and the Hansard would bear me right. He was a great orator. His legacy, a lot of people of all walks of life remember him for resuscitating Kenya's economy and thereby giving opportunity to millions of Kenyans to improve their life. People quip that during Kibaki era, you didn't have to know anyone. People improved their lives, did their business from small people to big business without having to knock on anybody's door. Opportunities just spread out. People remember him for free primary education, giving access to all the children of Kenya to access education, and even having a program going to fetch the children who would otherwise be left out, starting programs to improve lives. It was during his presidency that the program to buy livestock whenever there is drought from pastoralists started. During his tenure, the water services, which had collapsed from Nairobi to the remotest area, were woken up, and I'm glad that I was his minister for water at that time. You know, and also, you know, bringing um, integrated management to water resources, devolving services, which led to emulation of the devolution in water services by the Ministry of Energy, creating several uh, service delivery vehicles in energy and in the roads. He is a person who changed Kenya for the better, and people remember him with those good deeds. And I was in the opposition benches with him as my leader for 10 years, until 2002 when we went to government, and he appointed me Minister of Water, later Minister for Justice, until I resigned on principle in April 2009. And uh, to that extent, my political career is very much tied to his, and I can say I'm one of those people who learned at his feet to always do your best he was not a man of very many words. Maybe when he was with his, his age mates, he was. But he was easygoing, and he respected everyone. And I liked his style of management, because when he gave us responsibilities as ministers, he let us to apply our best and gave us their support. Although towards the end, I differed with government, and I resigned. I still remember him up to today for giving me that opportunity to serve Kenyans, which is a privilege, and also giving others. And when I hear colleagues have served with, and those who know operations of government, they say there hasn't been a president like Kibaki who lets his ministers fully apply themselves while backing them. During the coalition government, the sort of combination of the people in cabinet, that was the difference. His first government, he was very deliberate in who he put where. And that enabled the government to work in harmony. It also enabled the government to deliver results to Kenyans. And you can see a marked difference between, in certain areas, between the first government, the first, his first term, and his second term. But I also want to credit his second term, the coalition government, the grand coalition government, for bringing to birth the 2010 constitution, something that had been elusive for more than 20 years. That is one of the things that you credit the grand coalition government, which was President Kibaki and Right Honorable Raila Odinga. The referendum, the failed referendum of 205, that is where the fissures appeared. That is where that campaign, moving on to 207, ended up to be very divisive, and there was ethnic emotions whipped 
which contributed to, to the 2007. And blame goes to both sides. Because those in government, those of us in government, we look back and you wonder whether we could have done better. Our colleagues who are then in opposition, are there things they could have done better? Because it takes two to tango. I think that the sad part of our history, which we must never repeat. I remember uh, the fact that when we went into government, I there were people who thought I should not be appointed minister because I had rejected a shadow minister position previously. And uh, he brushed them aside and still recognized my contribution and efforts. So he had his own mind. You cannot say that during Mike Bucky's time that he either didn't give you a post or gave you a post because somebody lobbied. He always made his decisions. And that's a lesson to those in politics. Always judge people by what you know about them, not by what people think about them. And I'm not just talking about myself. I'm talking about how he dealt with issues. I also remember that uh, whenever one did right, he would both privately and publicly comment. And I really remember fondly when he commended me publicly severally for the water sector reforms, something I treasure. Prayers for his family. It's a very sad moment for his family, for his friends, for the nation. And we pray that God gives them the strength and the grace to accept and rest his soul in peace. The comfort to the family is that their father, their uh, patriarch has left indelible marks in this country, positive contribution that Kenyans will not forget.